yes sir hello and welcome everyone i am your moderator ramesh thank you for taking the time to join today as we talk about higher education institutions and community outreach program in india thinking through anthropological lens every positive thought is a prayer which has power to change the life so i invite dr nana saranya for the prayer song राम नाम तारक सदा बजोरे सदा बजोरे सदा जबोरे राम नाम तारक सदा बजोरे राम 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 जय गोदंड राम 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 जय गोदंड राम 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 कल्याण राम 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 जय कल्याण राम 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 जय गोदंड राम राम नाम तारक सदा बजोरे सदा बजोरे सदा बजोरे ओम शांति 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 ओम सक्सेस इज अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड ये यू डू थिंग्स विद हार्ट एवरीथिंग लीड्स टू सक्सेस वी हैव प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर राजा डी स्कूल ऑफ हेल्थ साइंसेस एंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट गांधीग्राम रूरल इंस्टीट्यूट एंड President, Indian Adult Education Association, New Delhi. May I request Professor Raja to deliver the welcome address on this occasion. Good morning to all of you. Welcome, Namaste. it gives me an immense pleasure today but the department of lifelong learning in association with the indian adult education association university of delhi and tamil nadu open university tamil nadu so these institutions are engaging in this <coughs> series of special lectures every month for this month july today and tomorrow we have planned the topic is higher education institutions and community outreach program in india thinking through anthropological lens and for this topic we have fixed dr m romesh singh professor department of anthropology university of hyderabad and basically he hails from north east and um, a very good uh, exponent a strong academicians as well as field worker and he has many credits in his life he started his undergraduate in 1996 as an anthropologist and he gained you may am full phd in hyderabad university one of the very prestigious university in the country and he has been serving as a faculty member and as credit many academic achievements and published number of articles and about him my colleague dr venkat ravi would be able to introduce him in a very uh, proper and nice manner so on behalf of all these institutions and the department of lifelong learning gandhi gram rural institute and all the participants who participated participating in this series of lectures 
of all on my own behalf we welcome dr romesh singh mrs all having accepted our invitations and is going to deliver a very important topic on thinking through anthropological lens and yet another important and dynamic young and very very uh, scholarly person dr r kumaran head of department of sociology of gandhigram rural institute he is one of the very dynamic person in the field of sociology not only is a theoretician but he is also academically sound but field work extension activities reaching the out and reached and helping the poor people organizing things in a proper manner so very dynamic person on behalf of all these institutions and my own behalf i welcome you dr kumaran <laughs> so nice of you that you have accepted our invitations to preside over the function and also to deliver the presidential address thank you very much for having Thanks. accepted our invitations Thanks. and i also um welcome uh, dr p chitra assistant professor school of journalism and uh, new media studies tamil nadu open university and she has been associating with us for all this our activities for collaborative activities as a media person and also as a partner institutions tamil nadu open university we are journeying we are together we are journeying in this uh, mist and the field and i welcome madam on behalf of all other institutions and my own behalf and having accepted to propose a word of thanks for this today's seminar or series of lectures and i also welcome dr s nyanasaraniya who really presented a very good prayer in the morning very pleasant and very nice prayer i welcome her and she is one of our guest faculties and i welcome dr s ramesh who is the moderator of this special lectures series and i welcome dr kalpana kausik director indian adulation association and my own colleague dr r bengatravi he is coordinating that whole program and apart from that there are number of persons and scholars professors and students are participating both in the google as well as the youtube so i welcome all of you for today's um, series of lectures and i hope and this lecture today will give you the, the new dimensions of the anthropological studies how this anthropology of life anthropology of the universe anthropology of the living organisms and how these are happening and how it develops and how it helps and extending hands join together for the universal development universal achievements so without any anthropological background so no development can be achieved so and i said that this and once i read one of the uh, greatest person king fish and uh, one of the very exponent person in the anthropological studies and he has written a book about the anthropological study of the backward communities in mother districts though he hails from the us and he came and stayed and studied the roots cause and the roots of the backward communities in mother districts so and another 
a person from Germany, King Fums, and he also um, studied about the anthropology university. He was a professor, and he really turned to become a peacemaker in course of his life stay, life journey. So many people who have excelled and extended their academic flavor, academic inputs, and academic excellence in the field of anthropological studies. And you know, there is a word in Glenn's, how are we going to understand the anthropological changes, morph morph morphological changes, like we say, anthropological changes in the society, because these are all very much connected with the sociology. That is why we fixed Dr. Kumaran, one of the very dynamic person who joined us today, that he is going to give his presidential address. So I'm not going to take much of your time without uh, wasting your time. And I am sure that today, Dr. M. Ramesh Singh, he would be able to give a new dimension and uh, in a very, very uh, uh, different way. So in this screen, I'm also able to see um, uh, uh, our own uh, uh, stream, Kailas Chautriji from Mau, Madhya Pradesh. And he is really listening to us, a senior most person, a, basically is a lawyer and committed entire life for the literacy movement, adult education, now lifelong learning. So on behalf of all these great four institutions, I welcome Sri Kailas Sautriji and all other members who joined already in the uh, platform. Let this platform be more vibrant and be more active. And there could be a lot of exchange of ideas and knowledge and experiences in this platform. So these few words, I really appreciate all the members who joined today. And I'm really, once again, I'm grateful to Dr. M. Ramesh Singh, who has accepted our invitations. And in one of these days, he would be able to come to Gandhi Gram <laughs> and visit our villages and to see how we are working with the village and the for the upliftment of the village uh, in, in this part of the uh, you know country. So with this, I, I conclude uh, my welcome address and over to Dr. Ramesh to proceed further. Once again, I am I am welcoming all of you and have a great day. Thank you very much. Kind of. Thank you, Professor Raja, for your warm welcoming our dignitaries and all. There is a immense power when a group of people with similar interest gets together to work towards the goals, same goal. Now we have a renowned person, Dr. Kumaran, sociologist, head department of sociology, Gandhikram Rural Institute. It, it is our pleasure and honor to have your presence on this hour to add more color to this webinar. May I request Dr. Kumaran to deliver the presidential address. Friends, uh, the most uh, beloved uh, and most respected Raja sir, who has been a great uh, inspiration to all of us, young a generation of teachers. Uh, Dr. Raja sir has been the bridge between the uh, young and the old generations of Gandhi Gram in terms of providing us the connection to the forgotten dimensions of Gandhi Gram to us. He's always been a great inspiration. And thank you so much for your uh, glowing tribute to, to me, sir. I hope I will be striving to deserve it. I would like to uh, place on record my thanks to Dr. Venkat Ravi for reposing the faith on me to do the presidential uh, address so that uh, we can provide a kind of a context and set the tone for the keynote address today. And thank you also for uh, choosing me, sir, uh, for your um, uh, wonderful uh, faith. I would like to probably repay it in, uh, in this small service that I'd like to do. And uh, very uh, warm welcome to 
Dr. Ramesh Singh uh, for having a grace the occasion and for really going for the fact that he's going to enlighten us with the anthropological perspective on higher education and community outreach programs. And I would like to also uh, place my greetings to Dr. Ramesh, Dr. Chitra, Dr. Jnana Sauranya, and to the entire team of Lifelong Education for doing this uh, wonderful initiative. I'm really delighted that uh, Gandhigram is really bouncing back to the academic vibrancy and uh, Lifelong Education Department is setting the uh, tone for that. Uh, and I'm very grateful for them. Uh, thanks so much, sir, for this opportunity to really conduct uh, this webinar program and for the opportunity that you provided me to be part of it. Uh, very interesting. In fact, when uh, Dr. Venkat Ravi sir uh, called me to do this presidential address, the thing that really interested me is the topic. Uh, anthropological lens particularly excited me. And uh, they all probably identified me because they thought somewhere along the line, sociology and uh, anthropology are sharing uh, probably the same parents uh, as it were. Uh, when I did my uh, MPhil program in Delhi School of Economics, I used to walk through the anthropology department in Delhi University. And uh, it always used to uh, kind of uh, generate a lot of interest in me in terms of the paradox that uh, a very interesting and sweet paradox that we see in India, uh, where, wherein we often exchange uh, the words between anthropology and sociology. And in fact, uh, even though we called ourselves as Delhi School of Economics, where I was doing my MPhil in uh, sociology department, I often uh, regarded it as an anthropology department because it was founded by a uh, father of sociology of India, Dr. M. N. Srinivas, but who himself was a product of Radcliffe Brown. And uh, many of them are products of anthropology, uh, anthropological tradition. So we also did a lot of fieldwork traditions. Uh, Delhi School of Economics always emphasized a great deal on fieldwork tradition, probably drawing inspiration from the anthropological traditions of British anthropology. And uh, I often prided myself on the fact that I am half sociologist and half anthropologist, and even my uh, film studies uh, benefited a lot, uh, largely from a lot uh, from the anthropological uh, traditions of ethnography, anthropological traditions of participant observation. When I did my study with the fans of uh, uh, Tamil uh, films by staying with them, by watching films with them, even though we used to call it as episodic uh, ethnography. Uh, so we, we share a common kind of lineage in India between anthropology and sociology. And um, it's quite appropriate that uh, Dr. Ramesh Singh is there and, did, and I happen to be also part of this. And anthropology uh, is a, such a fascinating kind of a discipline. And uh, the fact that it's going to be the entire uh, theme of higher education and community outreach, this is going to be lived through the anthropological lens, uh, really warms my heart and excites me. Because even in even in sociology department in uh, Gandhigra, we offer uh, two papers on anthropology. In fact, one of them is uh, Introduction to Social Anthropology, which I'm teaching. And I can. Uh, probably underline a bit of, by taking a little bit of time, not too much of a time, to say something about the, the fascinating and the, the immense uh, benefit that one can derive from uh, using an anthropological perspective or developing an anthropological outlook. Anthropology has a very far-reaching kind of an impact in terms of humbling humans. The humbling effect of anthropology can never be overstated. Both our traditions, as well as our grandma stories, our Puranas, Hittikasas, religion, all of them probably would have told us that the human history is probably much larger than, much longer and larger than we imagine. Probably uh, the, the biggest imagination they could ever have was to probably think in terms of 20,000, 30,000 years. But anthropology told us that human history is much, much larger. In fact, if you include the prehistory, human history is a very vast kind of a canvas of which we are just a tiny dot and it really humbles us to believe that this human is the product of a vast uh, uh, you know, processes of history and prehistory and whatever we do think all these things we owe to the prehistoric uh, foragers who lived two lakh years back and that really humbles us in terms of telling us that whatever we have done in our own lifetime or in our own uh, generations of time is nothing but um, uh, a tiny kind of a contribution. And it also pluralizes in a very big way by providing multitudinal perspectives, multitudinal uh, 
vicissitudes of the cultural ethos of uh, the whole human society in terms of time and space. So we also come to know that we are not just alone in this universe. Uh, probably that's what we used to think in ethnocentric perspective that we are alone. We are the special creatures. We are the special groups and cultural entities. But anthropology tells us that there are vast amount of communities and cultures coexisting with us. And that again humbles us and pluralizes. And anthropology can also humanize all of us in terms of telling us that all our primordial loyalties, all our so-called identities of religion, ethnicity, caste, whatever may be, all of these are absolutely new social constructs. And uh, if you really go back in time, our ancestors and prehistoric forages did not have any of them. They lived as one wonderful community. And anthropology as a discipline, I'm saying this with uh, an acute awareness that anthropology is also accused of having uh, taken part in colonizing processes and anthropology is both a product of colonization and also a colonizing discipline. I do uh, know that, but despite that kind of a reservation, I still believe that anthropology is a very dynamic discipline. Many of us might even think that anthropology is a kind of a discipline that deals with uh, the, the debt and the uh, forgotten uh, civilizations and prehistoric uh, and artifacts. But anthropology is so dynamic that it develops a new, new perspectives. In the 21st century, some of the wonderful perspectives that emerges are a critical outlook uh, by some of the popular anthropologists who are really bestsellers as well. I can really recall people like David Graber and his book, The Dawn of History of uh, The Dawn of Everything, and the most famous, uh, Yuvan Harari, who's uh, Sapiens, and uh, Richard Bregman's uh, Humankind. All of them are providing a dynamic and interesting perspectives about um, the human. Uh, evolution itself and the four, four ages themselves. Very often we think that um, the four ages were very childish, uh, very uh, pre primitive uh, kind of a tribe. All that they did was very rudimentary thing. But some of the new anthropological works are telling us actually that uh, they were much more democratic, they were much more non hierarchical, and they were much more wise than we are today. And that's really, really humbling because uh, today, in the name of specialization, probably a, an engineer would not probably know what it means to live uh, as a socially uh, cohesive kind of a person, but a sociologist probably may not even know how to change the fuse carrier, because that's the kind of a specialization we have today. But the forager had to know about everything that, that the prehistoric humans had to know uh, about the flowers that they were living by, the, 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 the wonderful uh, animals that they happened to know even by the traces, they need to know how to build houses. They need to know how to cook. So irrespective of genders and irrespective of the age, everybody needed to be wiser as a whole community. And also uh, in a way like they, these kind of interesting insights tell us our own lineage, our own uh, pedigree, and which helps us to also develop our humiliating uh, uh, kind of a humbling perspective. And I do uh, don't want to, I don't want to stand between you and uh, Dr. Ramesh because he's going to probably uh, excite you with his own ideas as to how our own ideas of higher education and community outreach can benefit from an anthropological perspective, which can never be overstated or exaggerated because uh, we all know in Gandhigram we place a tremendous amount of premium on outreach work. And outreach work has a lot to benefit from anthropology. Uh, outreach work is a kind of a, uh, huge traditions within Gandhigram where we place uh, enormous amount of importance uh, on outreach uh, activities. Every department takes their students on a weekly basis to the neighboring villages. We do uh, a kind of an ethnographic stay there, an episodic you know, kind of an ethnographic stay there. And it really benefits us to come back and reflect on the things that we see. So I am also, as all of you are looking forward to listening to Dr. Ramesh Singh and uh, his wisdom and um, uh, enlightening uh, talk is uh, something that I'm also looking forward to. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, thank you again. Thank you, Professor Kumran. Yeah, it was so nice of you, Dr. Kumran, and you have really touched upon all the great uh, anthropologists in, in the world and being a sociologist and you are able to connect uh, both the anthropology and the, the sociology in a very, very, and uh, taking that into our Gandhigram experience, how Gandhigram is extending uh, our uh, extension activities and out, uh, you know, we are able to outreach the 
uh, you know, the rural people and we are able to help them and uplift them. So very kind of you. And uh, uh, over to the moderators. Thank you very much, Dr. Kumar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Kumaran, for our uh, insightful words on anthropological aspects. And uh, people working together in a strong community with a shared goal and a common purpose can make the impossible to possible. We request Dr. R. Vingadravi, Associate Professor, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension, Gandhigram Rural Institute, Gandhigram, to introduce the speaker of the day. Uh, good morning to good morning to all and uh, it is an yet another uh, milestone in our efforts of bringing together national level institutions like uh, Indian Adult Education Association, uh, Delhi University, Tamil Nadu Open University and Gandhi Gram University together uh, working on taking the knowledge and skill related to the community outreach and extension activities related aspects and what is the role of uh, higher education institutions in such an domain. So in this, in this uh, series of lectures, uh, today we have an uh, eminent scholar, an anthropologist, uh, Professor Ramesh Sheen from Hyderabad Central University and he was an alumni of uh, Hyderabad Central University and is a uh, distinct scholar and uh, he was a recipient of uh, Chancellor's Award in the year 2017 and uh, in fact uh, uh, he was a student of an, a well-known sociologist uh, Professor Siva Prasad and uh, he worked for a long time and uh, I had an opportunity of working with Dr. Ramesh Shin in Council for Social Development and after that in the Hyderabad Central University. He's an, uh, we used to call him as a field marshal and he's a taskmaster always used to be in the field. He's not only in the tribal area and even now uh, he's very good at in, uh, uh, doing field work in the non-tribal area also. Yeah, we both have done and field work in the district of Tiruchi for evaluating the continuing education program way back uh, in uh, 2006 or 7. So such a scholarly person and he, can, he was heading the department uh, uh, in the Hyderabad Central University Department of Anthropology where uh, we had a uh, 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 what are called stalwarts like Sharma, Siva Prasad, and so many people, and uh, Vengtrov, and all of them. So, such a uh, very old department, and for which he was in uh, head of the department in uh, uh, 2018 or so, and I had an opportunity of visiting. And his work is mostly connected with uh, development anthropology, and uh, he was also touching on mostly on business anthropological aspects. And, uh, and not only that, he is very good uh, in connecting with a car such as uh, efficiently and effectively. And he has published uh, several papers and uh, he has uh, offered a dozen books to his credit. And uh, he was uh, also uh, with the uh, USA for uh, Drawman Postdoctoral Fellowship for 2015-16. And he was a uh, very scholarly man, and uh, he would be very fitting to talk about and uh, how we have to do the what are called kind of a community engagement and field outreach, in which how we should have an, uh, an a sociological or anthropological approach. And I think uh, uh, my friend, my old friend, Professor Ramesh would be an, a befitting person to talk about this topic. Uh, may have uh, Professor Ramesh Singh online. Uh, welcome Ramesh Singh and uh, yes. now, now it is your turn. Now it is your turn. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you sir. Good morning to all of you. Sir, uh, till what time I am supposed to end? 12? 
Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Romesh. Okay, thank yeah, you. Can, Romesh ji, you can, you can, uh, you can earlier also ten minutes ahead of that you can complete so that if people would like to have interactions or want yes. to say something. So, so I'll try to wind up by eleven forty. Okay, sir. Eleven forty-five, oh. something like that. No yeah, problem. Yeah. Yeah, because I'll yeah. make it a little more crispy and then. Yeah, Romesh Ro Jing. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, I only wanted to know Kamdauri. <laughs> Nungari, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is the word I learned from uh, our uh, Manipuri friends who were there with us in Ganigram University as a student. Okay, okay, okay. So very good. <laughs> and uh, over to you please uh, take care thank, thank you. you sir and uh, good morning to all and uh, first of all uh, respected uh, dr l raja uh, dean health science and rural development and dr Maran, head sociology department and miss kalpana Kosik, director i and uh, my own dr venkat ravi sir uh, because i never call uh, dr ravi i said all ravi sir ravi sir and uh, who is heading the Department of Literacy, uh, Lifelong Learning and Extension. And then Dr. Ramesh, who is uh, managing the show, and uh, Nanya Ma'am, and then Dr. Chitra, right? and the other dignitaries and my esteemed colleagues who are joining, and then students who are joining online in this forum. And then before uh, starting my talk, uh, I am a little overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed by the way things have gone just now. Because uh, nowadays what happens is that uh, online lectures becomes like a everyday uh, alu samosa kind of like uh, idli dosa kind of thing, the everyday routine. After COVID, no, the, the people don't take it so seriously. So that was my uh, uh, worry that uh, how effective it will be if we speak in online. So that is the one thing which I was worrying. But the way things have proceeded just now, the way Nanya Mehama started with the song and then the presidential address, welcome address, and then that really, you know, catch me. Then actually because most of the webinars which I have been seeing, see, every day we run webinars all across the country. I, I, I think all of you must be knowing this. And then none of the generally webinars, no, is done so formally like what today you people have done. So I had talk to you. And then another second thing which I am very happy about this gathering is that uh, today you have given me so much respect for the discipline which has been, you know, uh, dying out in the academic community, especially in the Indian scenario, and which is a concern of the Indian anthropologists today. As a young anthropologist, that is the thing which I have been speaking for almost a decade. And then and I'm happy that there are many people who knows about the discipline and the value of the discipline and the application of the disciplines and how it can be helpful for the human society, you see. So that is one thing which I, so 50% of my work has been done by some of my colleagues like uh, Dr. Kumaran, because he already explained how anthropology has been. So that way, I think uh, he has uh, reduced my workload from uh, 100 to 50 percent now. So now I can focus mostly on the how this paradigm, see, uh, which is really. And then when you talk about the this uh, higher education and then community outreach program, see, people talk, they use different kind of jargons. You know? And now another thing I just forgot to mention that I have lots of respect for Gandhi Gram role, uh, you know. Institute because they had lots of uh, community outreach program, extension program, which I have been hearing from Ravi sir because he is also very much interested. I, I keep telling him that he should have been joined in anthropology, not in the, the, the discipline which he had. But uh, uh, Gandhi Gram has been, you know, pioneered in this aspect, which I think this should be the role model. For, I, I especially feel that UGC or higher education in India basically should take a model from the Gandhi Gram uh, Institute, uh, universities, the kind of work which you people have been doing. I am very impressed with the kind of work. And that is the need of the day today. If you look at the NEP 2020, the, every page runs about this, uh, the kind of work which you people are doing. And this you have been doing for the years together. And then now NEP has been focusing now on this. It, I would say that it's a very late in the sense that, but even they never let them before, no? In that sense, but they should learn many things from the, the you know, there can be lots of takeaway from the institution like yours. So 
we may be saying that you know hyderabad central university is a well reputed institute and all but when it talks about the community outreach program no i can't think of a better place than your place because see uh, whether uh, the way you people have introduced me here no i may not be fitting into that also i i am i am a very small person Mm. I, I my association with Ravi sir is almost way back to 15 years ago when we were in, and I was just assisting him, and he was teaching me how to do things and all that. So, and by fault or my you know fortunate thing or my I don't know I have come to university and now I am working as a professor for the last six years and seven years I have been teaching here, and but the issue is that the, really this and basically this is not my forte also. But today, why I have accepted to speak on this area is that I have some reason to speak here because I am really disturbed by the kind of the, the term, the community outreach program, the extension program, which uh, uh, I am not telling about the, the kind of work you are doing. I am seeing all across the universities, like for say so-called central university like ours and other universities all across the world, how the community work has to be done. I have a serious problem with that. Because that is a basic fundamental problem in that. That is, and see, I keep telling you that it's not my forte. But when it's not in my forte, then why I'm speaking here is because I want to send some message to the purpose. This, uh, you know, August gathering here that there is some serious issue in the many of the higher education institutions when it comes to the community outreach program. That makes me to come here and speak in this forum so that this message will go to some of the people here. And I am not saying that the work which you are doing is bad. I am talking about other universities. Now, what is the basic problem? What I see in my own university is that the uh, community, the university, make, making a university a socially responsible, you know, institute for the social development and economic development of the society. And the community outreach is one program, the one package which is, you know, attached to the, all the higher education institutions to serve the people of the nearby communities, you see. And then what is happening is that there's an establishment of an NSS cell, like National Social Service Scheme, and which is headed by the another co one coordinator for the faculty members. And they, they try to, and then every year, you know, then the state government and central government ask for the report, the work which has been done by the respective universities. And then how these things are done is really disturbing. It's very mechanical, you see. But how, what is the actual meaning of community outreach program? See, it is about not just about we giving something to the people around us. It is about a mutual understanding, mutual learning, mutual sharing of life, you see. It doesn't mean that we are educated, we are in the higher education, so we have to give something to the people. No, we also learn from people. See, what uh, Kumaran was rightly talking about, the humanization of the anthropology, you see. see why I said that this is the... And many of the universities, the, most of these programs are run by some other uh, uh, background people. Not see, I seriously, seriously think that uh, some kind of anthropological training is required. Somebody wants to do the community outreach program because this, if I will take you back to the 19th centuries, how this works has been done by the anthropologists, you see, and that that's what this is just it's nothing like it's a uh, old wine in a new bottle. It is a very popular word which we talk about. Old wine in a new bottle, you see. This in 21st century, which we are talking about today, about the community outreach program or extension program, helping the rural people, institutions to the, uh, and helping the nation's economic development. See, these are the term which we are playing with the Zargans. But if you, if I take you to the 19th century's anthropological work, this has been the long term traditions of anthropologists, beginning of the discipline itself, you see. I just want to bring you one very important issue, how the different kind of dialogues which has happened between the journey of anthropological research in all across the world, you see. What is very important thing, important here is that what today we are talking about a community, the knowledge which we have, no, it is disseminating to the people around you and helping the people to make awareness about something about their life. Hmm? So that is, first thing is that that we become an agency who can bring some kind of you know changes to the society around us but first thing we as an agency has to be well equipped to interact with the 
people around us, you see. So there's a, some kind of disconnect between the agency and the society whom we are con concerned about. See, how many people know how to approach the people, society, you see. In anthropology, which has been, uh, our forefathers have uh, seriously prescribed that, you know, there's a word called, uh, Kumaran must be familiar with the imix perspective. Hmm? And the cultural relativism. He talks about ethnocentrism. It is opposite to respecting our culture, you see. These are some of the important things which we have to learn ourselves first and before approaching to the society. So what is happening is that it is something which we are imposing on the people, you see. The people who wants rice, no? If we are giving pizza burger, no? It doesn't work. This is what we are happening today in the name of community outreach program. There is some kind of disconnect with the people. So the need for a single suspect only one, you see. That is a traffic study by applying a mixed perspective. Listen to the people, listen to the voice of the people and the need of the people based on that to do community outreach program. I am reminded of some of the community outreach program which was done during my stay in the United States in North, University of North Texas. See, they go to every household and then the, how the food management takes place in the society, you see. See, and the, some of the community outreach program which was done, no, it is based on the community's demand, you see. And I still remember that, uh, you know, some of the program which was done by our university, that uh, uh, some of the slum dwellers, no, or ways laborers, kids, no, uh, our university NSS under the bannership of NSS program, we are trying to you know make them educated. You see, it's something like uh, we are chasing them. You see, first thing we should understand what is their socio-economic life, the condition, uh, the uh, ambience for learning, hmm? uh, whether do they really need this kind of learning, and what is the first basic needs for them. You see, so without knowing this. And directly imposing something on the people is one thing which is happening all across the universities, uh, you know, outreach program. That has to be stopped. And before uh, to make it these practices more smoother, then you need to have some kind of anthropological background that uh, understanding people through um, a mixed perspective and then trying to understand the people's culture from their own perspective. That is what cultural relativism we talk about. And then some kind of trending on ethnographic research, which is basically highlighting on the living with the people, no? sharing with the people. No? So basically, the person who have a thorough uh, uh, knowledge on anthropology, basically, they will be definitely the good human being. And uh, you need a good human being to carry out this kind of activities in the society where you are, you see. So, but now I am taking back to the, the work, which was one of the very father of uh, external anthropology, which we talk about, the soul text. This is about a uh, uh, few since, uh, I think almost it's more than 80 years ago, I am talking about when he was a professor in the University of Chicago, uh, he has done this work, outreach program. Can you think, uh, 80 years ago, an uh, anthropologist, hmm? He himself has done, along with his student, with the limited funds, the Fox Indians, the indigenous community, which was so much deprived by the you know other local community, and they are exploited by the many people. And the, he went there along with the students, and the, he studied them, and they tried to find out their problems, what they want about their life, and then based on their requirements, the it in tunes with your findings and his finding and he helped them to develop and then later on he helped them to empower you see this is about i am talking 80 years ago and today we are talking in the 21st century outreach program this is the same thing what we are doing. even we have not done the 20 percent of what uh, 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 soul takes has done you see in india i just want to bring another anthropologist whom i have respect for so much uh, and uh, nk bose you must have heard about the tribals in Lodha tribes in West Bengal and the Orissa border. These are the uh, tri tribals who are recognized as a criminal tribes by the Britishers. Hmm? And uh, even in uh, some point, that tra uh, trademark was continued for a longer time. And uh, N.K. Bose is the one anthropologist who studied them. And then later on, he developed that villages, the tribals, no? And he tried to remove that tag of criminal tribes. And people branded them as a criminal tribe, and then they are they look at differently by the our mainstream society. And 
N.K. Bose is the one who work with them, lead with them, you know, trying to share with their ideas and thoughts. And then he brings out the very different uh, kind of perspective, how people branded them as a criminal type without their any fault, you see. The fault was from the external agencies and we make them become an external, uh, 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 we, we, means we make them a, a criminal tribes. And then we, same time, we blame them. That was a very serious issue. And then NK Bose tried to bring out you know, this kind of, uh, uh, some kind of a clarification uh, to the public, you see, that's how uh, this kind of intensive study, the ethnographic study is required to know the people, you see. See, but the, for the sake of, uh, you know, outreach program, and now every, even if you look at the NEP, uh, and now uh, it is mandatory to have a field outreach program for all our students and faculty has to take the responsibility but how to do with the conviction and the intensivity and then try to think, bring some kind of results to that. That is very important for us to see. But the problem is that uh, instruction has been given to all the university higher education institutions that you should have a, 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 some kind of a social responsibility. The extension work should be mandatory for all the educational institutions. But education institutions are in the you know different kind of state that how to carry it out. I just want to share with you because I work on the business uh, corporate world for, for the last 10 years and then because now because I generally don't work on the tribal areas these days but many uh, the funny story which I just want to see that many of the corporate worlds they have so much money hmm? and there's a mandatory by the government of India that 20 percent of the company's earnings should be spent on the corporate social responsibility and they don't have any clue how to spend this 20 percent you see and they need a social scientist to take advice you see and these monies are dumping on certain kind of and then i just want to tell you that uh, in the name of corporate social responsibility even our university got some buses flying within the universities no see many people there are many people the organization who we don't know how to analyze these things so what I'm trying to tell you, tell you here is that there's a total reorientation of this program is needed. The how we perceive about the, because none of the people take it very seriously. It's a very mechanical thing which to do, do and there's one NSS sale in the university and on an interval basis we do some kind of activity because you have to give certain reports to the government of India. So that's why do you do things, but it's not very effective. The result is zero. That's what I'm saying. And there's a serious issue of sustainability. Why there's no sustainability? And our university has uh, conducted many literacy program, awareness program, and during the COVID time, even we are, along with the combination of different disciplines from social science and uh, psychology, we have conducted the uh, household survey nearby our university on, during COVID time, the, how the socioeconomic life and, the, but what kind of benefit people are getting, you see? Because that work was carried out during one month time, hmm? and it was asked by UCC, not by the uni university is not doing voluntarily. It was instructed by the UGC and the university has to give the report. But the problem here is that what villagers get from this work? Universities spend lots of money, then money is coming from the public fund. And we did study on the, this, uh, our nearby village about the SSA socio-economic survey, the problems and the you know issues and the concerns during the COVID time with the, our nearby villages. And report has been submitted to the UGC and report is available on our university website. But what people whom we are concerning about, what do they get? Nothing. Even they are not aware the report has been placed and something has written about them. See, this is what a total disconnection. So that's what now uh, I am reminded of uh, the work, uh, uh, some of the academic dialogue which has happened. And this is a uh, paradigm shift which we have to look for the, from the, all the, the social science discipline has to work together in this regard. And in the 1970s in American Anthropological Society, they talk about the publish and Paris. You publish, otherwise go. That was a the slogan and the many academicians keep publishing in the very branded journals, you no know, A-class journals, and we talk about, and then we talk, but how many people read, you see? I'll give you a simple example. If I write a, one article in the A-graded A journals, you no, know, even whole discipline people will not read. Only people who have interest on that topic will read. 
then our reachability is very minimal. That's all. Many of the academic works, even paper published in the nature science, for example, it will be read by very few people who are concerned with that particular. But can you think of disseminating the findings, this knowledge to the larger public whom you are talking about? We are uh, totally failing in this aspect. Sir. So that's what I keep telling that you need to connect with the people. But how to connect? Because if you don't connect with the people with this kind of knowledge, no, then there's an issue of sustainability. You may be doing different kind of extension program, but uh, the moment the program ends, then things also go on. See, the, I just want to share some of the stories about the how anthropology. See, there's no department in the world where anthropology degrees are awarded without doing a one month field work. So, what we are doing, see, uh, outreach program is nothing new for me. It's like a Garka Murgi Dalgivar our type. No, I don't find anything new on that because we have been doing It's a part of our discipline. And now, for the other people, it becomes a very new. That because it becomes one of the important component in the uh, new education policy 2020. And now everybody is talking about this and they want to like uh, even in our university in sociology department and political science, economics and uh, history, they want to in, uh, include the project work, uh, the field components according to the NEP. But for us, this we have been doing more than 100 years ago. You see, And that's what I'm telling you that no anthropology degree will be granted without doing a one month field work in the PG program. And the minimum of six to eight months of the duration of field work is mandatory for the PhD program. This is not only in India, it's abroad also. So what I'm saying is that community outreaching is nothing. It's a change uh, for anthropologists. It is a, it is a uh, old wine in a new bottle. Because we have been doing it, and we, but only thing is there's a new orientation which we need to work within the anthropologists also. See, until today in India, how many monographs has been produced by the anthropologists? How many PhD for thesis? And what is the, uh, you know, problem here is that we publish, so many tribals monographs are published and articles are published all over the world. And how many tribals knows about this? Only academicians knows. And what is the point? If this knowledge is not disseminated to the people whom you are concerned about, there's a totally, you know, this reorientation of the, the, our education system is needed. And the, the meaning of outreach program is has to be like, I will tell you that every year we have a more than 30 PS, uh, MPhil thesis, uh, and uh, sorry, a master's thesis, which is based on the one month of field work in the tribal areas. But what is happening is that this knowledge has been kept in our library and it's never disseminated. You see. The basic point here is that there's a need for disseminating. So earlier, we are so starving for publishing our Paris. So we work on that formula. Still, some people do it. But now, I just want to remind you that in December 20, uh, 2010, in American Anthropological Conference, the Jerry Seffort, one of the very popular anthropologists, he said that the time has changed. Now you have to go to the public or Paris instead of publish. Now, see what we publish, we publish so many papers and then it is read by very few communities, few, few highly literate people who are very concerned with the, uh, you know, that particular subject of interest. See, suppose if I publish some paper on business anthropology, which is my area of interest, no? None of the anthropologists in India will read. Only very few, 5% of the anthropologists in India will read because they will have an interest. So when within the discipline itself, people are not reading, then can you think of imagining the expanding or disseminating, bringing this kind of knowledge to the public? See, actually, we should grow along with the society where we are. So whatever, see, so why we do social research is that because it accumulates knowledge it adds new knowledge, the value system to the existing society. It makes human life better. Then if human life better, the, the motto is up by the educational institution, then what is the purpose of this knowledge? We have to store in the freezer or uh, almiraz. So the issue is that this knowledge is not disseminated to the public. You see, I just wanted to share with the other. See, Ravi Sar must have done so many projects. This has the project must be report must be submitting to the funding agencies. We also do that same thing. But actually, with this project, what the people whom we have studied are getting, you see. So now, based on this, now this uh, Zeri Sefer talks about the go to the public or Paris. 
slogan which has been started in american anthropological association and now it has become very popular today now and because of this uh, slogan now there is a special branch in anthropology which has come as public anthropology the discipline should connect with the public see and a very uh, fancy definition of anthropology is that a study of humankind scientific study of humankind and then one time scholar one of the very popular anthropologists in india lp vidyarthi says that you know social scientists are the social doctors who find the social problems and who finds who provides a remedy for them you see and there's one another very interesting quotation i would like to give you that see what we as a social science has to be, uh, should be more responsible citizen than any other people why i said that we are there in the helm of affairs for the policy making see whatever policy health or economy or anything you talk about social scientists are there because these are done based on our findings so if your research is not done in the proper manner in the proper without following the proper process then you are committing a crime see when you give a wrong social policy and it kills crores of people in the country but if medicine person a doctor give a wrong injection or don't wrong medicine only one patient will die but for the social scientists if you give a wrong policy then crores of people will die so this is what but people don't take it very seriously but there is a serious need for so you cannot frame the policy without connecting with the people so connecting is a very serious issue in our higher education system because we do lots of uh, you know work on these issues but somehow we do for the sake of you know doing it and whenever the instructions come from time to time because i have been seeing in my own university and the neighboring universities on this and then they organize different kind of counseling lectures and all this but what is more important here is how impactful you are to the society that is how much changes you can bring into the society see when you are trying suppose if i go and study one tribal community and if i write some report and submit and keep in my department if i get degree what these people are getting from me so now the the reorientation of our research program that that's what go to the public and paris slogan by the american anthropological association what they are saying is that the first beneficiary should be your research respondents see imagine in all over the country how many social scientists are working on see all social science scientists are working on the development of the society hmm? trying to understand the problem of the society hmm? but actually what we are giving back so why i'm trying to tell you here is that there is some kind of methodological challenges which we need to give some kind of orientations to the this higher educational institutions because things are not moving in the proper directions so how to make things connecting and then the first thing is that making little more rigorous orientation for the people who are going to bring this kind of knowledge to the rural areas and uh, you know into peripheral places you see see we have so much knowledge about tribal society but we never share with the tribal people whom we are concerned about you see so that's a very uh, important quotation which i just want to take out from one of the university's work the community work which they have done and they, what they have given is that see they have developed one model which is from boston university okay what they said is that if you want to engage in the community outreach program the first thing is that you have to inform second one is a consult and third one is a involve and fourth one is a collaborate and the last one is a empower can you tell me any of our outreaching program do we really follow this model do we consult involvement okay we involve them by force or something but we never try to collaborate and they, so then our empowerment is not possible when this process is not there then empowerment becomes a problem you see so how to get connected involve people is that first you should try to understand the people for understanding people you should come down to their level you should try to accept and you should respect the people whom you are interacting you see when you accept you know start respecting people whom you are interacting then they also start respecting you so that mutual 
keep intact relationship develops, then definitely it's not about a one way process because many people think that the outreach program is a one way process. No. If that is true, then I think whatever work which have done on the tribal society, you know, we also learn many things from the tribal indigenous knowledge system. Why indigenous knowledge system has become the global phenomena today? See, this knowledge comes from the tribal society, the illiterate society. And why this knowledge is useful? It has been scientifically proved and people are using it. So there's a need for give and take relationship. Like we have, we should not always, you know, think that we are giving them something. No, we are not giving anything. We are just imposing on them, you see. So there's a mutual understanding, mutual learning process is not taking place in the community outreach programs in the most of the cases. And then it is done very superficially and more mechanically. So that is the reason why I said inform, consult, involve, collaborate and empowerment. See, these are the very systematic procedure. If you follow it properly, then these things will work. And now another very important article, which I have come across, Vinity Agarwal's article, April 2022. The title of the article is University Socially Responsible Through Effective Community Engagement. And she, here she, she has given so many ideas how this has to be. Because why she has written this article is because it is in uh, you know connection with the NEP 2020. Now NEP is basically you know giving so much importance on this. But my worry is that there will be pumping of money to the universities in the name of these programs. And then how university will be struggling to spend this money and then these things will be wasting. See, why this public money has to be wasted without any reasons, you see. So first thing is we should be, you know, prepare on the ground level that how this can be done out. So that's the reason why I said that some kind of, you know, ground reality understanding. And there are many there are people in the university settings, they don't know how to approach a village, how to interact with the people, you know. And I, just to inform you that there's a different, uh, you know, procedures for doing field work in the rural areas, you see, beyond ethical concerns, you see the dressing pattern. There's a small topic on dressing pattern. How, what kind of dress you have to wear when you go to the rural area for the, the you know, data collection. There are different minor details which we do in anthropology. Hmm? And then what I'm trying to say that if we get into some of these anthropological details, no, then it may help many people to have a better connection with the people, you see. Basically, problem is that we always try to impose on the people. Imposing is a very outdated, you know, uh, uh, what do you say that uh, imposing is not accepted. Every individual has a freedom of speech and right, and you have a liberty to live in you know, any kind of society. Hmm? In that kind of situation, if you are trying to impose something, you see. Similarly, it is something like that, you know, many of the outreach program which we see in the universe, which is done by university, not by the Gandhi Gram. See, it's something like, you know, uh, our parents, uh, you know, giving our children uh, either engineering or doctor, you see. In South India, you go to any parents, uh, you know, what you want uh, your children to be, then either engineering or doctor, you see. But children wants to become a scientist. Or children wants to become an anthropologist, but they never realize that, you see. So it's imposing, you know, it kills the skill of the people, you see. So that kind of a connectivity, see, then what is happening is that I still remember, uh, because when I was involved in this survey, people are not interested. Because we are asked to do, we are a government servant, and the UGC ministry asked us to do, so we have done it. But when the kind of response, People are surprised why you are coming, you no, know, asking all this kind of question. So this is not the way of the approaching people. What I'm saying is that our approach has to be reoriented towards a more uh, people pro. So that's what I'm telling you that the very uh, fundamental thing is the immix perspective. Please ignore, uh, don't ignore this word. Immix perspective helps you to understand the people better. And then cultural relativism. See, this has been used from the 1980s, you know, by the many anthropologists, and it has proven very successful. The, the, the classic example is about the soul text work. That's why still we regard him, and he is the, known as the father of action anthropology. And today, when the public anthropology is uh, so much talk, spoken about, what uh, we are dealing in the public anthropology is nothing, the outreach program. See, how much money we are spending on the higher education? And what kind of knowledge we are giving to the children of younger generations? 
if this knowledge is not disseminating to the larger public then what is the purpose it becomes a redundant no and we always claim that we are the social scientists and we create new knowledge we try to understand the society better but this knowledge is not reaching to the people then what is the point you see and then there's another issue is that when this knowledge has to be disseminated to people you know and this knowledge will be acceptable or this you know, suitable for what kind of group of people that also should understand you see that kind of understanding is also very important because otherwise people who wants to become engineer if you talk about the anthropology lecture it won't work see this kind of forum if i talk something about anthropology and sociology people will love you see but if you bring some engineering student and medical people and ask them to listen this they will find it very sit so that is what uh, so i i have been i'm tell i am sincerely i'm telling you that i have been disturbed with this the term the out outreach program the extension programs and then uh, then there so many of the universities you know i keep seeing that they do go one day visit to the nearby villages and they do photograph and then they put in the post for facebook and university websites then what is this, this is not an advertisement agency no the internal reality is totally different that's what i'm saying we have to be very uh, you know particular about the sustainability how when you start any program bringing literacy program then it should have a sustainability i still remember in 19 uh, 2008 and 9 under the uh, banner of nss program university was doing some kind of village adoption program where they are trying to educate the people you see but that program was run for only one or two years and after that we don't know where those children are now and we spent so much money for that uh, running that two the programs in, for two years and then then finally what is the outcome see why i am telling about my own university is that because i have seen it but this must be happening in all across the universities because i told you that uh, in a corporate organizations also there are many corporate organizations when they are mandated to spend 20% of their earning company earning even they don't have any clue how this money has to be spent so uh, my issue is that uh, somewhere we have uh, not successful in you know bringing people together along with us. see people are nothing they are our research subject see for the science people laboratory for social science society is our laboratory without them we cannot survive you see so we have to give them respect regards and they are the the knowledge fill for us you see if they are not there we cannot survive you see we get knowledge by observing by studying them by examining them so there is a need for uh, strong collaboration though and uh, which is very inclusive in nature you see many of the researchers which i see see i will tell you that uh, till now i think there is no tribal society which anthropologists have not studied so far we have studied almost every tribes in india and we have written so much about their problems and society but this has been submitted to the government of india also but none of the tribals are aware about this thing i just want to share you one very interesting story the one time very uh, you know famous anthropologist uh, the hemant raf he has done a very classical work in the gonds or nadilabad and he has written one book in the north east tribe called naga tribe you all knows about naga tribes and the title of the book is called naked nagas this book is based on his ethnographic work done among the naga society and the title of the book is the naked nagas naga people doesn't have any clue about this book but when the educated younger generation naga people came to study in our university they found that book in our library and they got surprised somebody has written about them on this you see so anything in the very there's a serious ethical issues in our research you see you have to take your i told you that the society is a laboratory for us for social science and then when you don't take them into consideration there's a serious ethical issues so that's a, another issue which i want to bring about is the american anthropological association has given the ethical guideline for doing research saying that your research should not harm the respondents or your subject of your study and there should be anything which you write you should be taken a prior, first priority from them see i'll give you a simple example that we have done the covid survey 
on the or nearby villages and report has been submitted to UGC and then it has been placed in the university website also now you can open our university website and see but the problem here is that none of the villagers who who have given the data and who are our laboratory for writing this report none of them knows about this report what we have written see before doing this thing we should have consulted them said we are writing like this you know, because there's a uh, serious ethical issues in all the social science research we do in india today and similarly this kind of practice are entering into the community outreach program that is affecting the 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 uh, the problem uh, the why we are not able to see the fruitful uh, uh, outcome in the com community outreach program is that because you see uh, many of the university nss cells are organized uh, happen. then how it functions please see that's what i keep telling that uh, gandhigram is an exception and it has to be taken as a role model and then with the new education policy you a uh, government of india should realize that this kind of uh, uh, institutions has to be attached to the, all the universities which can provide which can channelize certain kind of orientation program or training program to do things much better imagine the every department in the university start a community outreach program with this kind of training background of you know the field work and ethnography and the idea of cultural relativism and the idea of a mixed perspective then how much impact will be there just imagine every department involved in this kind of activity this is what uh, nep is expecting us to do but my worry is that how it is going to happen that is a basic problem because we have seen for the last one or two decades that how this community works has been done by the universities and others because it's a very mechanical and a very minor things when the instruction comes then only we jump into certain things and then and another thing which i just want to say that a uh, few years ago also there was an instruction from the university to do to uh, provide some kind of village which is to the student and students just went and then took some selfie and they came back and they put put up in the facebooks and the university websites and then put in the and it was inaugurated by vice chancellor and the report was submitted but what is the purpose you see we the purpose of sending the students to the rural area is not just about understanding the rural life the students also learn from the people how to live a life in the rural settings you see and then we also give a certain kind of knowledge how education is important you see for the future generation you see to begin the, the, the ignorance is one thing which you know hamper the rural development in our you know many of the study has proven that you see so therefore what i am trying to tell here is that uh, see coming with the nep hmm, and then many emphasis is being given on the community outreach program and then this i would say that it's too late we should have started long time ago i told you that even american anthropology soul techs have done 80 years ago this kind of work and now uh, in in american many of the american university this uh, public engagement has been one of the important components and that's why they do lots of work and then society realize the importance of the discipline you see so i i myself is blaming the discipline because you see how anthropology is respecting united nations united states no it's not the same case in india i think kumaram my friend will agree with me see uh, uh, people say that sociology and anthropology is sisters brothers but uh, see how social, social, sociology has gone so far and anthropology lagging behind it's because we lack the connectivity with the people you see See, why American society, you tell me in America, any of the anthropology graduates who, who are unemployed, I will resign from my job, you see, because there's so much connectivity with the people and people respect the subject. See, if I want to make my discipline, uh, see, if, if, one day I just want to say, see, when I say that I teach anthropology means people don't know what is discipline. Again, I have to start from A, B, C, D. See, it is, and people blame that. Uh, I just want to say one more thing that in Kaun Banega Karopati show in Sony TV, which uh, telecast, and there was one student contestant from Delhi University who was doing PhD in anthropology. And then Amitabh Basan asked her, which discipline you are doing PhD? Then she said, sir, I'm doing PhD in anthropology in Delhi University. And then Amitabh Basan asked, the next question is, what is anthropology? And the people are blaming Amitabh Basan that uh, why this burger doesn't know anthropology, what is this bulky? Why should Amitabh Basan should be blamed for that? Anthropology should be blamed. 
because we are failing in disseminating this knowledge to the public, larger public. That is the reason why I'm saying that uh, we should go to the public and make aware the people what discipline is worth for and what we are doing. And then why this kind of discipline is useful for, you know, uh, human society and see bringing change in the society. No, see, this has to be, you know, very much aware. This awareness has to be bring it to the people in and around the society. Then, see, then once the people start knowing about the discipline, the worthiness, then people will start respecting the discipline, you see. See, when people, when now it's a it's a matter of dominance culture, you see, pride and the see pride. If you say that my son is studying engineering in America, my son is doing MBBS, and then if you are doing if you are saying that my son is doing anthropology, which one will be rated higher in our society? You see, dominance paradigm. You see, we talk about it. See, because the people look at immediate applicability, and then it's popularity. So we as a discipline, we should work you know, uh, more seriously, try to connect with the people more authentically, more intensively, and the people should realize that, okay, this subject is worth for studying. So we should first respect, learn to respect the laboratory which we are living on. Without this laboratory, we can't survive. Laboratory means the society around us. When society doesn't accept us for our research, then what we will write? So, that's why I keep jo uh, joking with my, some of my colleagues that now tribals are running away from anthropologists. Because we every year, there are more than 41 departments in anthropology in India. And every year, we have to take around 30, 40 students to tribal areas and some areas, no? And there's no uh, nothing beneficial to these people. Only we go and disturb them for 25 days and one month and then write something about them without their knowledge and submit the report and get degree and get job and speaking in the public forum like me here. But the, what is the point? What kind of contribution I am giving to the subject my study? That is very important. So this is the basic ethical issue which is given in the first top priority in the American Anthropological Forum that you should give the first priority to your respondents first. Any research which you do, it should be first respond, uh, uh, benefit should go to the, your subject of your study. So that's what I keep telling you that this reorientation is required and the same can be applied in the community outreach program. And then I would love to see the, how Gandhi Gram is doing the rural extension program and some of the things definitely can be, more, you know, uh, used as a model by the other universities all across the country. That is one thing. And I wish that this kind of institute should be attached to the all the universities with the coming of NEP program, because uh, my concern with the NEP is that they have given so much importance on this outreach program, but how this outreach program is going to do is uh, my, I, I'm, I don't understand really. I mean, that is my, my serious concern. And so that in this kind of juncture, no, I thought that there's a need for some kind of reorientation to, and uh, some kind of anthropological understanding is required because we don't, I don't boast, but we have a better understanding about how we connect with the people and how, in what way we can connect with the people and what is the best way of doing research. Hmm? So there are different kinds of techniques, the procedures which we follow for the, especially exclusive for doing field work data collections. See, there are guidelines, two books, which was a Royal Society for Anthropological, Royal Anthropological Society has published two books exclusively for doing field work in the villages and the rural areas and India. So that is a serious guideline, but nobody bothers about it. Everybody, everybody is claiming that they are master or not, but that's not the right way of doing it. So that is the reason why when you ignore all this, when you bypass all these uh, procedures and then understanding the mechanism, the procedures, then, then definitely the connectivity issues like our mobile network. So that is an issue, serious issue. So with this, uh, I think I just want to stop here. And if you have any comments, I'll be very happy. And then uh, I am really happy today because uh, uh, this is a different platform for me after a quite long time, because I generally speak in the management uh, schools and the institutions about my the, how anthropology can be applied in the business and other things. But today is very much concerned with the root grassroots people. So that is a very concern of the anthropology. But when the moment the word community is associated, no, anthropology should come. That is what, because, and there is a clear cut guidelines on how to do the data collections. 
we train basically to our students how to interact with the people you see and how to dress up and uh, what kind of things you should carry when you are going for data collections you know there are different rules and the regulations which we follow in a, but ignoring all those things and just trying to connect with the people in the name of outreach program it becomes a serious concern in today's uh, coming days uh, research that's all right. so i thank uh, ravi sir for giving me this opportunity and i hope to see you all in near future thank you um thank you dr ramesh singh um really i would like to uh, uh make few observations and one thing is uh i think i never seen uh, ramesh singh as becoming this much opened up <laughs> and uh, uh he has been expressing so much of concern uh, for what is happening in the academic institutions and it is in a very frank and judicious manner um, of course uh, being a student of rural development and uh, uh, being a student of social anthropology or whatever may be the anthropological or rural sociology or all uh, sister disciplines and we we have a concern and really i fully subscribe the concern which is expressed by my uh, old friend uh, professor ramesh singh and it is a uh, uh, what do call uh, uh, which we we require to have a relook we need to have a relook because the the uh, what do call the triangular model of teaching research extension now the extension process need to become more dynamic and you call it whatever may be the name outreach community engagement and whatever may be it i could see the a thick not a thin a thick fiber running from the introduction of dr ramesh to still he has put down his microphone he was completely mentioning that there need to be a social responsibility among the academics and uh, really it is a very good uh, uh, what to call exposition which uh, professor ramesh singh had and we would like to subscribe that uh, thing and uh, it is a very nice now it is uh, open for the participants uh, reaction of uh, i hope that there are uh, many sociology students are also there and uh, uh, i have my own colleague uh, Uh, professor kumaran is also on platform now it is open for discussion if somebody wants to react they can react um professor professor kumaran you are you, you are on the chair and uh, yes uh yes uh, thank you so much uh, uh dr ramesh singh uh, for this mm -hmm. uh, a very thought provoking very straight from heart kind of a speech in fact uh, your speech resonates uh, most of what we uh, hold very high in our department uh, i i fully share and i fully share your concern and i fully agree with you on many of the points and when i hear your speech i am uh, reminded of uh, that wonderful speech that ivan ilich delivered to the conference on inter american student projects i i understand you know that quite well the powerful speech that he delivered and many of your uh, the, the the very themes of the very theme of your speech uh, echoes what he was trying to say uh, even though he was saying it in a completely different way but uh, many of you uh, many of the points that you made uh, with the academic uh, rigor was made in a different uh, way uh, by uh, your and elich in fact uh, Yeah, I I fully see that beautiful point that you made in terms of how we are going there uh, in the name of community outreach. We go and impose ourselves, and we need to become politically correct in our uh, engagements with communities, and we cannot go with the uh, holier than thou kind of a perspective or 
uh, we cannot assume that we got a toolbox to solve all the problems and we always occupy that high petasal or ivory tower but we have to hold as humble but I, as i talked in the beginning anthropology can be one of the probably one of the primary tools with which we can actually humble ourselves and go to the field and as people who can learn from them uh, rather than you know help them uh, but uh, the help the word help must be replaced with assistance rather than help because help is always something that you do from above and i, I also see the beautiful uh, very exciting uh, very important point that you made in terms of uh, prioritizing publishing uh, has been a, a, a kind of a melody that has affected all our academic disciplines but it is very important to go to the people public go to the public and perish rather than like you no know, go to the public or perish rather than publish or perish go to public or perish is the norm and in our uh, department we also emphasize a lot in terms of going back to the people with the data that you collected and interpreted the data and read the interpretation to people they are collaborators in our process yeah, yeah, and uh, they are not just data providers whether it is community work or research work we need to go back to the people to read the entire conclusions interpretations out if possible even evolve that conclusion and interpretation in the company of uh, those people and we do that in fact we use a lot of anthropological uh, research instruments like uh, narrative methods life history tools yeah. After writing the tools, you go back to the people and read the stories to them so that they agree or disagree because they are the primary authors. So I, I fully see the point. In fact, our PhD and MPhil works are taken back to the people and read it out to them so that in Tamil, so that the community endorses it, the individuals endorses. And thank you so much for the powerful speech. And uh, I fully, uh, probably this speech will also, the takeaway from this speech is that in our university, we have devised a very beautiful manual for VPP where we uh, mention, um, not emphasize the do's and don'ts, but also we need to develop a manual for an extension work itself. I hope there is, yeah, yeah. there must be something that is already there, or if it is there, we have to formalize it a little more so that we have a standard procedure kind of a manual on uh, the ethics of doing community work in Gandhigram, because most all of our departments do engagement work with communities and we do it with the political correctness thank you so much and i again uh, as a chair i would like to welcome other participants to make their observations thank you sir actually i just want to add with that uh, because you see, i was why i was telling about american anthropology <laughs> that they put these ethical guidelines in their website and the, all the students whoever is going to do research you now they have to uh, comply by that ethical guidelines because india we don't follow all those things it's like a, a but that, that is a very pathetic thing. And then, and then community programs, which we do, no, it's a, just, a, just a mechanical thing. I, my recent example is about that COVID survey, which we did. People are running away from us. Sir. You know, why to disturb people? That's what. Uh, so this is going to happen more and more with the new education policy. That is my concern. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. If you use people as instruments, they will start running yeah. away once you reach them. Oh, that's the problem. Sir, no more queries means we can close. Yes, I think. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, because, because you can. Yes. Please, please. Sir, uh, sir, namaste. I am from. Uh, uh, Indira Gandhi National Tribal University, Amarakantak, Department of Social oh. Work. I'm a doctoral scholar. Okay. Show me your face, sir. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sir. So, okay. uh, sir, uh, Come this in. was wonderful. One minute. Talk, because, uh, because, because, one minute. Uh, Dr. Kesh, one minute. Uh, Ramesh Singh, our, 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 our Ramesh, our Ramesh, now, Kapat Ramesh is now heading the department in Tribal University. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, he's there. He's there. Just, just to tell him, please, please. Okay. Thank you, Ravi sir. Yes, because uh, because you can proceed now. Yes. So, sir, please I'm uh, Doctor Ramesh B. Sir, scholar only. Please, yeah. please go ahead. Please go ahead. Please, please. please, please. So, sir, it was wonderful uh, talk. Really, uh, it was like my story when uh, Ramesh sir is uh, telling about. Uh, uh, what is the ethical issues and what we have to do as a researcher, as a uh, academician. So when we are going in the field, uh, because this is a, also a, a tribal area, sir, 
and we are working with uh, Baga tribes, which is con considered as a particularly vulnerable tribal group. So the condition is not so good, and our university, so many scholars are going there. So usually when uh, uh, we are discussing and we are also thinking that there is some social responsibility what we have to do and what kind of ethical issue we have to face. Sir, uh, there is one question I, I want to ask you. Uh, sir, uh, so many projects we are doing here and our field work also. So we have a lots of findings, but uh, until unless, unfortunately, it is in only in the paper, in the draft. Yeah. We are submitting in our department in our university in the form of dissertation or thesis. So how we can uh, uh, give this kind of, uh, you know, ground exp uh, our experience, ground report to the policy makers, uh, because uh, we are not, uh, uh, as much not, uh, we have capacity. So whatever we can do, we are doing just uh, running the uh, coaching classes and uh, we are trying to some fundraise and uh, making some, uh, digging the bore barrel. So like that uh, we are doing in our uh, own label. But uh, in the policy level, policy maker level, how we can uh, send our uh, uh, suggestions, our reports to the policy makers? This is my question, actually. No, actually, see, oh, there's a little misunderstanding. Actually, uh, most of the policies are done with the ground level uh, uh, studies. Like, I just want to tell you that a high level committee, which was formed for the tribal society during the Manmohan Singh's prime minister, see, Actually, if you remember, that report is available. And then that report was uh, studied by the Varganis Kaka was a chairperson of that uh, committee. And then one of my own colleagues, Senai colleague, Professor Misra, was one of the members. They have uh, compiled from the, all the studies which you are saying. It's not that uh, policy makers are ignoring our work. When they form the committee, you no, know, these committee members will be divided into different areas and they will try to look. So whatever studies so far has been done for the last uh, 10 years for the tribal society, they try to look into those studies and then they cut out the important issues which are based on the research projects or findings. The, and then they make the final report and then they try to recommend certain things. And then uh, that is how these things are done. But another new addition, which I just want to tell you that, which is done by uh, one of my own colleague, uh, who is a uh, professor, B.B. Sarma, and he is the working on one project. This is about the research come extension program. It is about the promotion of the uh, indigenous ethnomedicinal practitioners of tribals in Sabara. And it was sponsored by Indian Council of Medical Research. See, that's what I was telling you that uh, it's not always we giving something to the tribals. We also learn how the ethnomedicine practices in the tribal society is helping the tribal society as well as the people like us. Like today in our society, now we are going back to the Swara Samaj, no? Everything, you know, brown rice, no? Sugarless, huh? See, now, now the gaining importance of our traditional things, you see. In this kind of juncture, the promotion is very important. So his project is basically the action come research work. What in the first base, uh, phase of his research, he is trying to understand them. And uh, what is their worldview and how do they conduct themselves. And after getting this thorough understanding of their life, and then he is trying to bring them some kind of mechanism to have a better promotion of their knowledge system to the larger society. So that villagers who are practicing the ethnomedicine will be empowered through this medium. Hmm? And it will be this, their knowledge will be known to the other worlds also, which was not known before. So this kind of research base, like uh, action based research is very much needed. But the paper based research, no, I think I think we should uh, incorporate this action based research because first research is important because research will give you new knowledge. It will add to your understanding. When you have a better understanding, then only you can think of some action plan. No? So we, we don't connect with this action plan. That that person, I think that's what that's a, that's what I keep feeling that a reorientation is required. How we look at and we are very academicians are very powerful in playing with the jargons. See, after some time, no, see lifelong learning and extension. Then we will name some other things also. Names will keep changing, but the fundamental things remain. That's what I'm saying. No, this kind of works are not new for the anthropologists. This has been started by. 90, 80 years ago by the Soltex, among the folk Indians. 
and indian also the loda tribes uh, it was done by nk bose and bomik and then uh, hemant draft in adilabad gones you will not believe me the adilabad uh, gones you know still they remember hemant draft they have his st statue in the village center of the village because it's because why people are remembering you is the kind of work you have done for the people so it's like a high time that we should give it back to the people whom we have used as our laboratory for creation of knowledge and for our personal gain you see see today yes. i have been sir and i have, i have done phd on tribals and then i have gone become but what i have given back to the people whom i have studied so that is what i my argument is ramesh sir can i thank you yeah. sir so thank you very much uh, so ramesh sir uh, really it was in you know, indeed you know great uh, detailed presentation so adding to your points i just wanted to um, so add couple of points here so as you mentioned that so we have benefited uh, from from the tribal society and we have used them as our library laboratory so here now the things are that so society is again going back so per se to nowadays as you mentioned that bp sugar everything and again people are going for oil less food and then again organic food the similar way so if you look at this this tribal concepts uh, we where we have located so there is you know, one millets called kodo and kutki so high level promotion is being done through the university there is one lab called you know livelihood incubation center so uh -huh. where so where this importantly the millets kodo and kutki so uh, that is the prime uh, means uh, basic food of the tribe types importantly in this location madhya pradesh uh, this amarkantak region so uh -huh. that is that is widely being uh, promoted by the means it's we can say that it's you know as a part of again uh, extension otherwise uh, so promotion of the local foods so that is one thing the other one is also there in amarkantak region we have one flower called gulbakai one so which is highly uh, used for you know, curing of uh, i i i related diseases so that then again ethno medicine so if you look at the samarkantak area plenty of you know medicines that are being manufactured means in the, in the small uh, way by the tribals local it may be gondi it may be again uh, so baiga so that is being again we have a rich tradition rich culture rich knowledge So about that, uh, so as you mentioned that it is the need of the hour to promote, need of the hour to uh, again uh, promote their knowledge system, again uh, to share with uh, so and again bringing to mainstream. So that is what I wanted to share, and uh, so thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, is there any queries from other participant? and uh, you may download your e certificate uh, in short box the link is there uh, real power comes by empowering others we are very much fortunate to have had a worthwhile lecture which is witnessing for a multidisciplinary personality and field level experience in anthropology thank you professor ramesh singh for your wonderful thought and we are looking forward to have you once again with us in the near future and uh, now it is time to propose the vote of thanks may i call upon dr p chitra assistant professor school of journalism and new media studies tamil nadu open university chennai now it is it is time to dr chitra for the vote of thanks Okay, thank you, Ramesh. Uh, a very good afternoon to one and all present here. I feel much privileged to propose the vote of thanks for this program, for this special lecture series on um, career education, institution, and community outreach program in India, thinking through anthropological lens, organized by the Department of Lifelong Learning in the extension Gandhi Gram Rural Institute, along with the Indian Adult Education Association, New Delhi. Tamil Nadu Open University Chennai and University of Delhi. My first and foremost thanks is to Professor L Raja, who is a dynamic guru, who is very energetic and always spread positivity in among us. And he is organizing so many programs of this kind. 
I thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity given to us also. And uh, I thank um, Dr. R. Kumaran, who's the head department of sociology from Gandhigram Rural Institute, for his valuable presidential address and sharing his expertise, who's also an expert in anthropology. So he shared more, so many uh, views on this topic. Thank you so much, sir. I take the opportunity to thank Dr. M. Ramesh Singh. He has been talking to us for last uh, more than an hour, who's uh, analyzing so many points and uh, he's critically analyzed and gave an insight on how to look forward to handle this responsibility in community development and how to go about in implementing NEP. Very happy to listen, in, listen to you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, I also thank the organizer, uh, Venkatra, uh, Venkatra, uh, Venkatra Ravi, sir, uh, who is very humble and uh, very strong in his approach in organizing these kinds of program. And I also thank the other organizer, Kalpana Kaushik, ma'am, the director of IAEA from New Delhi. And I also thank Jnana Surya and Ramesh for their participation. And uh, I also thank the participants from various institutes, like Gandhigram Rural Institute. I have my own students, scholars from Tamil Nadu Open University and uh, student participants from other institutions. Thank you for making this program a success. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, madam. And also we would like to share uh, on information that we have also another webinar on uh, community engagement and social work Mizoram experience tomorrow. The eminent scholar, Dr. Kanagaraj Iswaran from Department of Social Work, um, Mizoram University will be the chairperson. Uh, we request you to everyone, please join in tomorrow also. Thank you for your uh, extending uh, cooperation and support in this regard.